The backhand topspin is one of the most important strikes in modern table tennis. A technical analysis of the backhand topspin can be done from different perspectives which reveal important technique criteria better or worse. In this video we discuss more than 10 technical criteria for a good backhand topspin as well as the advantages or disadvantages of the different perspectives. From the sideward perspective in extension of the baseline of the table, we can have a good view on most of the technical criteria such as the parallel feet position, the end of the swing forwards, the ball contact or timing, the movement plane, the elbow, the hip angle, the use of the wrist and forearm, the end of the backswing, the blade inclination and the rotation of the shoulder axis. But for criteria such as the free arm position or movement and the end of the swing sidewards, we can probably find better perspectives. Looking at the moment of ball contact, we can see that all players hit the ball when the elbow joint is slightly bent, although the player at the right side hits the ball nearer at the body with a less elbow joint angle, which can result in a more parallel placement. In addition, the player in the middle is standing too close at the table. From perspective 2, that is sidewards in extension of the net, most of the criteria can be seen very good, except the foot position. In comparison to perspective 1, we have a better view on the free arm and the end of the swing that should be towards the desired placement and not sidewards. A stable elbow that should not move too far from back to front before hitting the ball or a sideward movement after ball contact is an important technical criteria. In addition, the use of the wrist and forearm keeps the movement shorter than to have a long swing with the arm like in tennis. That's very important because we have less time and have to prepare the next movement. An interesting moment in time is when the ball hits the table in front of the player. In this moment the criteria plate inclination and the bending of the wrist should be optimal. Unfortunately the bending of the wrist of the left player is too less and the blade inclination of the right player is because of a too strong backhand grip too flat that results often in hitting the ball with the edge of the blade. From perspective 3, which is frontal to the player, we can observe criteria such as the end of the swing sidewards or the ball hit point on the blade very good. On the other side, some criteria such as the foot position or the movement plane cannot be seen so clearly. Also criteria that are connected to the timing or distance in relation to the body can be better seen from a sideward perspective. In this perspective the moment of ball contact on the blade is interesting. The optimal place on the blade should be like in the picture of the player on the left side who hits the ball in the middle and upper third of the blade where the sweet spot is good. The player in the middle and on the right hit the ball too deep near the lower rim of the blade. This is often a sign for a too hard ball contact during backhand topspin. In these pictures the moment of the end of the forward swing is shown. The player in the middle has the optimal position to find a good transition to the next strike. The player on the left points too far to the side which can be a sign that the wrist movement comes too late during the forward movement. The player on the right points too far upwards with the tip of the racket which can be a sign for a ball contact with a little bit side spin instead of a pure top spin. From perspective number 4, most of the technical criteria can be observed very good such as the use of wrist and forearm, the grip, the blade inclination, the free arm position or movement and the movement plane that should be an inclined straight line from the end of the backswing over the ball contact to the end of the forward swing. 
other criteria such as the free arm, the ball contact on the blade and the shoulder axis movement can be seen good although even better observable in other perspectives. The kind of grip that players use can be observed very good in this perspective, so that we can see that this player lifts his thumb during backswing, which is not optimal. This player uses a too strong backhand grip, which means that the edge of the blade is turned too far towards the index finger, so that the blade inclination is too strong and he often hits the ball with the edge of the racket. From perspective number 5, most of the technical criteria can be seen very good or good. Observing the criterion of the position or movement of the shoulder axis, there are slightly different technical philosophies. The one says that the shoulder axis and free arm should be quite stable without movements. The other one recommends a slight rotation from left to right, which should increase the impulse that can be transferred to the ball. But there is agreement that there should be no pulling back of the free shoulder, which is a typical mistake during the learning phase of the backhand topspin. From perspective number 6, most of the technical criteria cannot be seen so good except the feet position, the footwork and the vertical movement of the body. The extent of the vertical movement of the body should be not too much when the backhand topspin is played on a coming block ball with a little topspin because the impulse should be more horizontal. When the arriving ball comes with backspin, it is necessary to increase the vertical impulse of the body and the blade inclination and movement plane. Comparing the lowest body position during backswing and the highest position during the forward swing, the extent of the up-down movement during backhand topspin becomes clear. An extent more than one vertical head size, like this player, is disadvantageous because the body movement to the next strike via the footwork could take too long. Thanks for watching, have fun during training and please subscribe and ring the bell.